Hello everyone, Russ Barkley once again with a commentary this week on the link between ADHD and obesity. Uh, I've talked about this link before over in my lectures on health outcomes, but I want to specifically focus this lecture just on the topic of obesity because there is increasing research showing a significant uh, risk between having ADHD, severity of ADHD, and being overweight or clinically obese. Uh, to begin, I just want to point out uh, a meta-analysis on this topic that was published back in December of 2020, so about two and a half to three years ago, uh, in the journal Obesity Reviews. As you know, I like meta-analyses because they combine the findings of many different studies into a single analysis, giving us a much more robust picture of what the evidence is for the, for, in this case, for the relationship of ADHD and obesity. This meta-analysis also focused on the risk in autism spectrum disorder, another disorder known to be related to obesity, but we're going to talk just about this risk in ADHD. So here is a review of the available studies. 95 studies were included in this meta-analysis, and it found that for ADHD there was an overall nearly 15% risk of obesity as defined clinically, about a 21% risk of being overweight, uh, and only a 4% elevated risk of being underweight. So in other words, it's really the relationship between ADHD and excessive weight and even clinical obesity that appears to be problematic here. This review also found that in both autism spectrum and ADHD, but particularly here, our interest is ADHD, that the risk increased markedly between ages 6 and 12 and up to adulthood. So that obesity, for instance, rose from about 13% of children to nearly 20% of adults, and the risk of being overweight was around 19% in children and 31% by adulthood. So this growing risk over time with age of increasing weight and finally risk of obesity. And by the way, this isn't the only meta-analysis out there. Samuel Cortese and others did several meta-analyses of this relationship back in 2016 and 2017. Uh, so if you use Google Scholar, you can find all of the research that has been done, including these reviews uh, on this risk of ADHD with obesity. So let me bring up a PowerPoint presentation just briefly that will help me stay on track here, very important. And let's talk a little bit about what these findings are, what they might mean uh, for treatment and so on. So what is the risk? Overall, if we look across the studies and we look across the reviews, by adulthood, the risk of obesity is double that of the typical population. The Cortese review, for instance, found that it was nearly 40% of adults with ADHD were obese versus 20% of individuals in the population. Now, as I've said, these reviews also show that the risk is lower for obesity in children, so it hasn't yet had a chance to kick in very much but that that risk increases the longer we follow these individuals up into adulthood. So risk increases with age. Um, now, why might that be the case? Because I think what you're looking at here is an interaction of an ADHD trait, specifically impulse control, with exposure to an environment that is rich in fast food, high carb, sugar containing substances that is even more available to current generations than was available in the environment of previous generations. By the way, back in the 70s and 80s, risk of obesity wasn't discussed in ADHD research, it just wasn't found, but that's because these high carb, high sugar, fast food diets, uh, or, or foodstuffs rather, simply weren't available, weren't as ubiquitous in the environment as they have become in contemporary times. So uh, we're seeing that over time, across generations, this risk has grown. And we're seeing that within the population, as children age, 
the risk begins to increase that they're going to be overweight and obese. We have found across these studies, my own included, that ADHD is primarily associated with a larger body mass index, clinical levels of obesity, impulse eating problems, binge eating pathology, and even to some extent, particularly in women, a risk of bulimia. And this risk is much greater <clears throat> than the risk for anorexia nervosa. <clears throat> Pardon me. That is a restrictive eating disorder often associated with perfectionism, something we don't tend to associate with ADHD. But at least one study I know of did find a small risk for anorexia. Most do not. The risk is really toward the binge eating disorders and bulimia. So those with ADHD seem to be, as I've said, more prone to high carb, high sugar, high caffeine, fast food diets than our typical people, and they seem to be more prone to consuming these substances primarily related to how severe their impulsivity happens to be. Recent studies going back about three years have shown that there is a shared genetic link between genes for ADHD and the genes that are contributing to higher body mass index and specifically to clinical obesity. And that it really is the genes driving the impulsivity trait, as I've said, more than those related to inattention or hyperactivity. Some research recently done shows that these shared genetics can also be shown to be influencing the growth and functioning of a specific neural pathway in the brain that is known to be associated with both of these conditions, ADHD and obesity and impulsive eating. So there's a biological connection between these conditions. It isn't simply that people with ADHD are eating more because of impulsivity. There also is that underlying genetic risk that is mediating these two. So what can we do about it? Well, we really don't know. There's not an awful lot of research on intervention. There are some papers out there discussing what might be done, but I can't say that there's a great deal of controlled research about this. First of all, there is a little bit of evidence that ADHD medications, specifically stimulants, <clears throat> might be helpful, but only in some cases. Some people get benefit, some people don't. It's primarily being driven by the appetite-suppressing anorexic effects of the stimulants that might be producing the benefit here, uh, hence the weight loss. But not always, so we can't guarantee that. Uh, it's probably going to be seen a lot less with the non-stimulants, which don't tend to produce quite the degree of appetite suppression that we see with the stimulant medication. I haven't seen any studies on counseling people with ADHD who are obese with regard to their uh, shopping, grocery shopping, their dining out habits, their diet and nutrition. Uh, might there be some benefit to this kind of counseling? Maybe, we just don't know. What about cognitive behavioral therapy interventions around eating related behaviors and cognitions, that is thoughts? Uh, would that be helpful, as it has been shown to be in some studies simply of treating obesity generally? I don't know, because those studies didn't really look at ADHD posing this kind of risk. Does having ADHD make you less amenable to these treatments unless you're also being medically treated for your ADHD as well? We don't know. That's a possibility that needs to be explored. There might be the need for grossly obese individuals to enter into <clears throat> excuse me, residential treatment programs or inpatient therapies for the obese in order to get control over their dietary habits, their eating, their eating cognitions and behavior, and then upon discharge, frequent follow-up with counselors, perhaps weekly, uh, around trying to maintain whatever gains were uh, obtained during the inpatient program. We just don't know. Another possibility, of course, particularly where the obesity is grossly overweight uh, and really posing significant medical or clinical harm, of course, are the surgical interventions such as stomach stapling and so on that might help to reduce this problem with binge eating and obesity. Again, question mark, we just don't know what works for individuals who have both ADHD 
and clinical obesity. So we, we could use a lot more research on this topic. So uh, there you have my weekly commentary, uh, this time on the risk of ADHD and obesity. Uh, join me again next week for other commentaries on other topics. Uh, again, I hope you found this useful. Check out my website at russellbarkley.org for some interesting fact sheets as well as uh, my new books on ADHD in adults and also books for parents that you might find useful. So thanks for joining me again. Take care, everybody, and be well.